1970, the world changed. Fanny actually became Ginny Mae. And a new company was created that was called Fannie Mae that didn't do what Fannie Mae used to do. Now, if that isn't confusing, nothing is confusing. And the new Fannie Mae was, became a publicly traded company, and it could purchase riskier conventional mortgages. And it had an implicit guarantee from the U.S. government, but not explicit, implicit. And in 1970, at the same time, Freddie was created to package those mortgages into bonds. And those bonds are called mortgage-backed securities or MBSs. And to sell them to investors. Freddie became a public company in uh, 1989. Fannie's charter, original charter in 1970, allows it to buy up to 100% mortgages as long as the amount over 80% is insured. Now, I've read several articles that say Fannie can't buy mortgages for over 80%. That's incorrect, and it's always been incorrect. So if the type of mortgages Fannie could invest in uh, became wider and wider and wider over time. Uh, 78, 81, 83, Fannie was allowed to purchase multifamily housing mortgages, not just single. Uh, it was allowed to purchase second mortgages after the first, and second mortgages are riskier, of course. And then it was in 81, it was allowed to purchase adjustable rate mortgages. I have also read articles saying Fannie Mae could not purchase adjustable rate mortgages. That's untrue, too. Now, the caps, even the worst, not only did the type of mortgages Fannie could buy become uh, more numerous and, and riskier, but over time, the, the amount was raised and raised and raised and raised, which also increased the risk. And here are the, the uh, changes in caps in the mainland USA, the caps for Hawaii and Alaska are different, they're much larger. So, 80, it was 108,000. By 2000, it became 252. By 2006, it was uh, 417, and I think that's even before 2006. And 2008, temporarily, was raised to 730. And the total amount of mortgages Fannie and Freddie were backing was 2.5 trillion in mid-2001, and by mid-2007, only six years later, it was 5 trillion. Now, in the same time period, the price of U.S. houses doubled as the Fannie loans doubled. And what they had did, that they had created a uh, bubble feedback mechanism. Price of houses went up, they raised the amount of money they'd loan. The prices went up more, they raised the amount they'd loan more. The prices went up, they kept raising the amount more. This fed the bubble. The United States government was instrumental in creating the housing bubble by its housing policies. At the same time, Fannie and Freddie are supposed to uh, help ensure that low-income people have access to housing. While on one hand, on the other hand, they're doing everything possible to raise the price of housing. Hmm. So these are totally contradictory goals that make no sense. And these are quasi-governmental companies. They have backing by the U.S. government. They get special loan guarantees from the U.S. government. They get lower interest rates. So this gives them a big uh, um, a boost uh, to any competitors. And whenever you have uh, some company in the field that actually can raise capital or do things cheaply, more cheaply than anybody else, that company is going to eventually take over that field. The second half of last year, 90% of mortgages were backed by Fannie and Freddie. And the first half of this year, it's 81%. So effectively, the mortgage market has been nationalized. Not officially, not uh, the jury. There was no law saying we're nationalizing the mortgage market. But in reality, it has been because there's only one, this one quasi-governmental institution that's, that's backing it. 